In this lesson, we're going to take a quick look at how we can apply our normal map to the object that we've created in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and open up our Hypershade editor so we can get to the texture properties. So I'm going to come over here, select the Hypershade window. Alternatively, you could also just select one of the handle twines and then select handle rope. But I'm going to go ahead and select it from the material editor. So here it is, and then hit Control A to get your options open. We no longer need this color information here because we have a texture file that we saved out in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and grab that. So we'll go to Color, select the little checkerboard, come over, select File. Then for the image name, I'm going to go ahead and click this little folder. And I'm going to select Rope underscore D and click Open. I'm also going to go ahead and give this texture asset a name and you can see the texture files are always going to be located in the texture tab of your hypershade window. So if I go over to textures, I can see file three right here. Now let's say I wanted to give this another name. I'm going to come over and I'm going to call this the rope underscore diffuse and press enter. You can see the name also changed in our texture information. So here, this texture file is now rope diffuse. I know exactly what this is in case I make a change to this texture. Like let's say you just loaded yours in just now and you do not like the way it turned out. Well, you can just go ahead, come over to your textures. You'll know exactly which one it is. You select it, then go over to Photoshop, make the changes to the texture that you need, save over the rope underscore D JPEG because we already have it assigned here. All you'll have to do when you make changes to this texture, if you want to see them immediately within Maya, you just click reload and that will reload this texture. So we've applied the diffuse texture and we've done this step multiple times throughout the series. Well, let's go ahead and assign the normal map to the object. So I'm going to go ahead, select the material. So I'll go back to materials. I'll go ahead and select the handle rope. And I'm going to come down here to bump mapping. Now, as I stated in the previous video, a normal map is really three bump maps laid over top of one another. You have an X, Y, and a Z bump map, and they're a layer, and that's what gives it a interesting blue hue. Well, that's what a normal map is. It's just a bump map. It's three bump maps, to be more precise. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to assign a normal map to this bump map. So I'm going to click on the checkerboard, and then I'm going to select a file much like we would with a diffuse texture. And here we do have to set something up real fast. And you always have to remember to set this up because it's very important. What you want to do is tell Maya that this is a normal map. It's a tangent space normal. So we're going to use it as, drop this down, and select tangent space normals. Typically with game engines, that's what you're going to work with, almost 90% at 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to be working with tangent space normals. So go ahead and select tangent space normals, and then we're going to assign the file to this. And you can see there's a little arrow with a box here next to the bump value. Well, we got to go ahead and click that, and you'll recognize this window. Now we just go to the image name, and we're going to select the image that we want to assign. So I'll go ahead and click this little folder here. I'm going to select our rope underscore in the normal map and click open and you can immediately notice the difference. This is looking really nice, really nice. I'm very, very happy with the way this turned out. So I also want to go ahead and give this a name in case I decide that I want to come back and change this texture. So I'll go over to textures. You can see file three is right here. This is a file texture that's being loaded into Maya. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to call this one the rope underscore normal. That way in case I need to come back, make a change and then reload it, I'll be able to quickly access it from textures and then just select the rope normal and it'll take me right to it. So I know where it is. That's just keeping yourself organized. It's not a necessary step. It's just something I like to do when dealing with normal maps and diffuse maps. I like to give them a name if they're from an external texture. So this all looks pretty good. So now that we have all of our textures applied to this handle, the twine, we want to run a quick render. That way we can get a good idea of exactly what our outcome is going to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on all and move the camera up to where the top of this handle is inside the center portion of my viewport along with the twine. So that way I can make sure that when I run a quick render, I'm going to capture both the twine and the handle. So I'm going to kind of center that a little bit 
And I'm going to come up here and click on this action clip icon. It says render the current frame. You just go ahead and click that. It's going to run a quick render. Now you want to make sure that you're set to Maya software. So drop this down and click Maya software. Then you can click on render to run another render. And immediately I can tell that I need to make some adjustments to the normal maps. This normal here is way too strong. In fact, looking at my sword inside the viewport, I kind of like how smooth this is, so I might completely remove this normal from this substance. That way I get this nice smooth polished effect. And the twine, I need to dumb down this normal map a bit because the bump is just way too strong. It looks very, very ragged on this sword object. So we need to make some quick adjustments. This is very easy to do. So now that we've ran our render, let's make some fast fixes here. So I'm going to close this out and I'm going to select the substance and I'm going to come down to the normal section and I'm just going to knock this out entirely. I don't want any of that normal. I'm just going to remove it because I want this nice polished effect. Then I'll come up and I'm going to select export images to disk. Now we need to select the substance bake to texture path so we're going to click on this folder and you want to select your source images folder and click select. And then you also want to set your map width and map height to 2048 by 2048. And once you have all that set up, now you want to uncheck create shader network because we don't need a shader network. We're just going to use a pre-existing shader network. And once all that's taken care of, just go ahead and click export. That's going to export it and you can see that it has because it's added some new files here. Now we actually don't need the old files in here because we have overwritten them because we just exported this to the same directory that we exported the first set to. So we need to get rid of them. To make this very simple to understand which one you need to delete, number one is always the last one that you exported. So whatever one you exported last will be number one because it kind of will push the one that you had exported previously over. So if I export it again, the latest export would be number one and it would move this one to number two and it would move number two to number three and it kind of would just push everything over. So number one is always the one you want to keep. So we can go ahead and select the number two and I can see it's number two of the diffuse and go ahead and select that and hit delete. And then I can select the normal and I can see this is number one so this is the last one I exported so I want to select the second one and just go ahead and delete that one and then I'm going to go ahead and select the specular and I can see that I have number two here and I'll just go ahead and select number two and press delete there and I can see that I've deleted the correct ones because again it always makes the last export you did number one and pushes everything over but also in my viewport the texture is still there so I know I didn't delete the wrong one so that's a quick indication if you just deleted the wrong one you need to hit Control Z on your keyboard now I also have to reload this because just deleting it and creating the new export that's not enough. You also have to reload it because in Maya's memory, it still has that old texture. The one that we rendered out in that image is still in Maya's memory. So we have to reload it. So I'm going to select each one and just click on reload. And that should clean up that normal map issue on this. So let's run another quick. Okay, that looks really nice. Now I need to take care of this normal map on this rope. It's just a little too rough for my tastes. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to open up Photoshop and load that normal map in. And a quick fix for making this less strong is I can just create a new layer. I can select the previous one. I'll just right click and duplicate that. And then I'm going to put that above the top layer. Now let's hide the bottom layer. And then I'm going to select the background copy use my color swatch picker and I'm just going to use my eyedropper tool to select this. Click OK. I'll select layer one and I'll just go ahead and paint in there. OK and then I'm going to select the background copy and I'm just going to lower the opacity. You can see that it's dumbing that down. So now it's nowhere near as strong. In fact it's very low now. I've taken it down to 31 percent. I don't want to really go any lower than that. And once I have that done I'll just go ahead and resave this out. So go ahead and file, save as and then I will change this to a JPEG because that's what we were saving out as and I'll just select that rope underscore in and click save and click OK and there we go now if I come over and I need to reload this so I'll select that rope normal because again we changed it outside of Maya so we need to tell Maya's memory what this looks like now so we'll just come over and click reload so I select the rope normal 
selected reload, and now let's run another tester. And that looks a lot better. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and set up our model for the projection. If you have any questions or comments, please post below the video on brainpoof.com and click subscribe to follow us on YouTube.